Hi, I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're out to say welcome to our channel. Today we're watching The Apothecary Diaries, Season 1, Episode 5. Last episode, Mau Mau gave some advice to Concubine Liwa. Yeah, and um, now Gyokyu, Concubine Gyokyu, is uh, getting a much-needed break. Yeah, and uh, it seems like this episode's probably going to have to deal with the outcome of throwing pieces of small pieces of wood designed wood into a fire and making it magic colors <laughs> and causing a rash of right. sort it reminds me of the i believe it was little wood pieces that mau mau was like pay was written on or the way that she could pay for things yeah i i guess they would dispose of them when you use them yeah but in terms of like why it would you know we've already had something. a type of wood being an issue yeah so you wouldn't think that it would come, come up back. again as an issue but like i burning mean a specific type of wood the same idea of lady liwa's illness coming back oh kind the white of happened. powder so yeah you're right could be a similar instance there but i trust mau mau i do too i can't you know what for the the sake of everybody in the show, I hope nobody gets slapped. But for the sake of my own enjoyment, I really want someone else to get slapped. Yeah, I would rather them get dragged across the room oh, by their hair. It was amazing. All right, you ready? Yeah. Sweet. Same person from the end of last episode saying it's a curse, right? Jesus. Covert operations. Oh, shit. Jinchi! I like him with his hair up like that. Do you feel your heart fluttering a little bit? The last thing you see before you die is my beautiful face. <laughs> Techniques. Mau Mau is knowledgeable about techniques. The Ma Clan. Good fighters. Like returning back to normal. <laughs> that is very kind. <laughs> They're the reason she gained more weight. <gasps> Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Seeing what your work has done. Mau Mau, the power of seductions is in your hands. I love their friendship. Oh, but it's gonna get interrupted. Yeah. It always is when there's snacks. <laughs> now he's an accomplice. <laughs> the hands. It definitely looks like rash, yeah, like bumpy. It's interesting that it's on the palms, you know. I like what they did with the audio. <laughs> like a gas? Do you think it, he feels any pain or it's just discoloration? Now, now you're so cool. Hanabi no shikumito najis. Kimika 
ありがとう。ジョーちゃんの薬はよく。Fireworks。すぐによくなるさ。お見事。さすが薬。Wonder if it'll work though, you know. She could possibly have a failure at some point in the series. m a r e o g a n a k e b a h a n a s h k a k e n a t o No, no, do we have a name for the doctor other than Quack Doctor? Mate, I don't know. 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 Like an infiltration, spies, like a signaling、Secret、fire. Messages. Do you think the intention is to change the fire color as a message, or do you think the messages are just being burnt with the trash? You know?、Mm. He didn't read what was on the messages. Could have been for somebody else who threw them away. Gyoku's one of them. They really are in a competition、Whoa. to be married. She looks young. Aduo. I'm excited. I like her freckles. Me too. I'm worried something's gonna happen at the event. I feel like Jinchi might not like seeing her all dressed up. Ginger, oranges. Wow. I love ginger candy. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so cute. Can stifle the simplest ideas. A little work can make things better. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. The Emperor's, the Emperor's own. own. That's crazy. <sighs> Mao Mao isn't just an apothecary, Mao Mao's a revolutionary. <laughs> A genius. An innovator. An innovator. Possessiveness. Oh, wow. So pretty. 
Makeup. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't think Jin Jinji's gonna like it? Are they fake? The freckles were fake? No. no! Maybe it's just because of how pretty she looks. Wow. She looks young. She looks Mao Mao's age. That looked like she could be a sister to Jinshi. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not good. Ladies in waiting, we're not happy. <laughs> Seeing Momo. His favorite toy. Favorite toy. Show me Momo. Show me his reaction. Mm. She does look great. <laughs> No. ごきげんよう。人種様。ああ、薬屋か。化粧をしているのか。いいえ、していません。蕎麦かすが消えてるぞ。はい。消しました。化粧を落としたから消えたんだ。ははは。You <笑><笑> Yes。花町とはいえ、女に飢えた奴もいます。金も持たず暴力的で性病持ちも多い。チビで痩せギスの仕込めなら早々狙われることはないでしょう。To protect herself. いほうの可動化しか合法の唇しか買う方には区別なんてつかないです。腹立たしくないのか。それは言うまでもなく。でも人種様のせいではありません。申し訳なかった。珍しく素直だ。痛いです。そうか。じゃあ、あとは会場で。え、男物の神座師？なんでまた？いいの、羨ましい。私も欲しいわ。でも早速約束を破ったのね。You're hers. It's like he marked her too. Oh my gosh. Like staking it's like, claim. It's, it, it, but it also conveys a sense of protection. Yes. Like if he can't be there with her, at least he like in the same way the clay was protecting her. I think other people would notice it, you know? Mm -hmm. I can't wait to talk about I, that. Whew. Uh, no! What? Absolutely not! Okay, that was The Apothecary Diary, Season 1, Episode 5. Man, you were 100% right about the freckles. Uh, you know, before uh, we started this episode in the intro, I was like kind of making jokes about the idea of there being like another slap moment mm -hmm. or something like that. This episode had my favorite moment of The Apothecary Diary so far. Really? That was phenomenal. I it, what was the moment that was your favorite? What do you think? I just need to double check. It, it, just just the entire like sequence of Mao Mao explaining why she adds the freckles on into Genshi into Jinshi's response to it, and and how well written, well paced, and how f fantastic the score was. Like the composition was amazing. Um. 
you know, throughout each of these episodes, it's one of the things that I look forward to the most is to see what they add in terms of audio because they do so many like comedic audio cues. Uh, they have some really great backtracks for sure. But what I've really been noticing so far in the series is when they pick and choose to add silence and when they build upon that silence, because sometimes you go silent for a moment like Mau Mau cooking candies to get like a dialogue exposition of, wh of what she's doing, why she's doing what she is so that it can segue into the next part of the episode. But in other instances, like in this case, they silenced it out in terms of the explanation and then built on top of that with subtle audio and then really let it like go when you got to see Jinchi's interp interpretation of, of these events and what he felt about it i thought it was fantastic it was my favorite moment of the apothecary diary so far on that um same topic of the audio first like as you're bringing up the use of silence there's as i think you kind of alluded to uh silence can be used both for like building sus like suspense and tension and like also kind of notify the viewer that this is like a po more powerful moment that like shh listen up yeah. But it can also be used in this show as a comedic thing. Like, there is a really big pause for Jinchi's immediate reaction to seeing Mau Mau in the makeup that they kind of just hold that pause yeah. and that silence for, like, a really nice amount of time. Like, and it's one of those, like, comedic timing, I feel like is probably very hard to judge and it be, like, completely successful. Because any ounce longer or any ounce shorter, it's not going to hit as well yeah this was a really good amount of like it's oh directing because because especially because what the viewer was feeling in that moment is oh my god what's his reaction gonna mm -hmm. be and so the build-up our um excitement over seeing what his reaction was going to be it was like we were being played with there by having their it be drawn out before we actually got to see it the other timing that audio was used in an interesting way in this episode that you called out to during the episode was in the kind of flashback scene mm -hmm. of the man throwing away the wood. Yeah. And the audio was, sounded completely different, almost mm -hmm. like we were, I don't even know how to describe it. I don't know if you have better words, but it, it felt flashback. The, the compression of it. Yes. Yeah. I, I, this is a weird thing to say, uh, especially because we're five episodes in. But I imagine, you know, like, uh, there, I have not had many instances that I've ever read a manga and then been able to watch a TV show because before the channel, we, I, I was not within the world of manga or anime other than like Hunter Hunter, Dragon Ball, or the things that I've said like in previous discussions and talking about it. But there is a, 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 a anime coming out about an, a manga that I've uh, read, Whisper Me a Love Song, something al along the lines of that. And I'm excited to see the- It's coming out yeah, in April, I believe. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see the, like, adaption, right? But when it comes to manga adaptions, like, you, you always, like, worry in theory, right? You, you hope that a, a manga that you like, or e even a story that you like, if it's being adapted in a different medium, you hope that it's, it's, it's something that benefits and does it justice. And- I I am I can't imagine that there would be anybody in the world who if this is a manga would be like oh this is a this is nothing but a great adaption like it it feels so well directed 5 episodes in I'm like holy shit this is this feels so well produced it feels like like it was finished and then revisited and double checked and triple checked and like the timing like how you brought up of everything feels so delicate and meticulous i it, it's great i'm really really enjoying the show while i'm happy to have not read this manga yet even though i did buy volume 1 and i did want to read it i i feel like my one of my reasons i'm so happy that i didn't read it other than being able to enjoy it with you here for the first time is because Oftentimes, there is a, I feel at least, a huge level of disappointment when I view adaptations of things that I have seen in a different medium being kind of transformed into another. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, I would say there is a high level of disappointment or a, 
I would have rather the original content over this. Yeah. Or at least a, a remake of that original content in the same form it was already in. Something of something of the sort. And I feel like with this series in particular in that conversation, I, I feel like there's no way to me that the to believe that this wouldn't be a favorable adaptation for someone that read the manga. It feels so well paced. I feel like a lot of my issues when I see adaptions. kind of adaptions is the pacing. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, why are we speeding through all of these details? We need to immerse into this world that I love because I loved it when I read the book or something of the sort mm -hmm. or saw the original cartoon. I don't know. There's a lot of different kind of forms that they go into from cartoon to movie or live action to manga to anime. I've seen I've seen something that was a live action and then I read the manga and then now it has an anime. So like there's yeah. I've seen a lot of things that production aside and and really enjoying it for production, what uh, what other thing this did for me this episode is I think like I I am really appreciative of what they've what they've let me see of Jinshi right now. Like I, I I didn't expect it, and I didn't see it coming in the way that, that they are showing it to us. I have not watched many anime that fit in the sh same type of vibe as the Apothecary Diaries, but when it's when his response to hearing Mau Mau say that risk or that fear, this is what she had to do, like, there was, like, uh, doesn't that make you angry? And he was getting, like, angry, and, and he was apologetic, and you could see this, like, passion within him, this glimpse of it, that I'm like, holy shit, why, like, what got you to the position that you're in? Like, what are your ideals? What are your motivators? What's your motivation, and, like, what do you aspire to change and make, like, make the Satan... <sighs> It, it makes me feel like Jinshi wants to live in a world that everybody feels safe. Or at least shit like this doesn't happen where Mau Mau has to go out of her way to intentionally put freckles on her face because it lessens her chance of something happening to her. Right. I mean, he has a line that's like, I, I wish that I could have policed them. Mm -hmm. and, and Mau Mau says to that, well, I mean... There already is legal varieties of kind of selling someone into a situation. And it's really hard and especially not your fault that this happened. And I, I love that idea of seeing someone who probably lived a rather kind of sheltered life, but has a position of power being willing to and and almost like wanting to and desiring to open their mind up more in terms of how they could possibly better the world or at least better someone in front of them circumstance yeah. and protect them. Mau Mau said he's being straightforward for once. And like when you have a character that everybody reacts to is like gushing over, oh my God, you're perfect. And he has that charm about him that through his interactions with Mau Mau, you can kind of see how manufactured part of that charm is you can see that he is putting it on mm -hmm. and and with that is like that expectation of how Mau Mau will react right and when she doesn't we see his expression of like oh what that didn't work or like his like oh what like uh and, and through that I guess now we're seeing what the person behind that charm or mask that everybody else sees truly like feels like right. and truly is and that's so exciting to me and it's um not as much uh there's differences in terms of masks or putting on sometimes characters do it to protect themselves or to hide who they truly are because maybe they feel insecure about letting the world in in Jinchi's case he cannot be genuine because his job is to be a distractor, is to be a test, is to flirt, is to put on this charm so thick that people will will risk maybe betraying the emperor and therefore he's doing his job to the emperor. And he, Jinshi has multiple jobs, right? Like Jinshi is on, I, I respect Jinshi a lot more, especially after this episode, but like his level of intelligence seems to be similar to Mao Mao's in right. that type of regard. And that's what I'm adoring about it. He it's seems like, to actually care about 
fixing these issues or helping the people that feel cursed. He's yeah. genuinely like pondering things and trying to kind of help people and keep the rear palace a safe place. Yeah. I loved him uh, giving the hairpin to Mau Mau too, because like, I, I it's it was such a great through line through what Gyoku said about like your mind. That's my favorite part. But it, it was, it's also, I'm so excited to see if there doesn't have to be anything bred from it, but if there was an interaction of somebody like wanting to reprimand or be rude to Mau Mau and then seeing that hairpin or somebody else pointing it out and then them being apologetic or something. Like, I could see those type of things happening. It's, like, not even just the hairpin, though. I think that, like, my favorite part is that it's a combination of Gyokyu and Jinchi with Gyokyu's lines of being, like, you are my lady-in-waiting. Yeah. And I, that's why I'm bestowing the necklace and then Jinchi bestowing a hairpin. It's, like... She has these two very powerful people in her corner loving and caring for her. Yeah. And that is hopefully going to serve her very well in the future with the kind of risk-centered job or a path that she's going down. Being this person that is uh, healing people, uh, creating medicine for people, t taste testing foods for poison. She is, especially when she's working with Gyokyu, which is like the current maybe favorite of the emperor, or at least people are perceiving that Gyokyu maybe has a better chance at the moment at actually becoming empress. Yeah. Um, but also she's uh, Jinchi's favorite. <laughs> and it's super interesting that like Goshen like thinks about, like observes, could it be, could it be because of his favorite toy? Like mm -hmm. why he's excited to go to see Gyokyu. And first of all, it's interesting like the, the, the perception that Goshen has of Jinchi is obviously much truer to who Jinchi actually is than other people's perception of Jinchi. Mm -hmm. And with that, I wonder, especially after this in interaction, what the truth is behind Jinchi's observations of Mau Mau and how he sees Mau Mau. Like, I, like would toy suffice? Because it, it's like, there's a level of like, Tr like truly like a level of respect and like consideration that I feel that Jinchi has I, for Mau Mau. I love what you're doing right now with opening up a discussion and discourse on the usage of the word toy in regard to how Jinchi would view Mau Mau Mau. It's like that gives an idea of a, a play thing, something that you aren't actually serious about. Something that could be discarded or you could get a new one. Yeah. Something that you see as a lesser status than you. Uh, but that is not, at the moment, how I would view... I don't know Jinchi's character, like, what he's yeah, going to do in course. the future. But I don't view him right now, as the viewer, seeing Mau Mau as, as a toy. And I think that, I, honestly, I think the scene progression is supposed to solidify for us that this line, could it be because of his favorite toy, we are then being shown how Jinchi gets straight forward for once in front yeah. of Mau Mau and how he reacts to her story. And I, I don't want to discount the potential that, like, I'm not looking at could it be because of his favorite toy as a sh as the shallow sentiment right. of, oh, a toy. It That's doesn't not... have to be, actually. He doesn't, Goshen doesn't have to be meaning it in the way that we could possibly read into yeah, it. Yeah, like, I, I completely understand that, too, because it could also mean something along the lines of, like, just, like, something that it, that Jinchi is truly focusing in on right now, you know? A distraction. Yeah, or, yeah. Something that could possibly push him to neglect his job. Jinchi is supposed to be seducing the concubines, not one of the random ladies in waitings of one of the concubines. Yeah. He's supposed to be testing the loyalty of the emperor's women, not here to find his own woman. And so it, it could be this idea of like, yeah, is this actually something that could, I we know that Goshen has asked Mau Mau to refrain from doing the things that seem to entice Jinchi <laughs> further into her. And I think that is coming from his place of like, it's, he's like, it's fairly hard working for this guy when he is constantly wanting to go check, check in on Mau Mau. 
but not yet have we seen him actually neglect his job. Yeah. But I think that if he did, I think what's opening up here is that what if he genuinely did start to fall in love mm. and did start to have romantic feelings? How much harder would it be for him to fake the charm and the flirt with other people to do his job of testing if he f identifies in himself, oh my God, I actually have feelings for someone. If he wants to genuinely be straightforward, that is going to be a really uh, tricky issue for I him. I feel like we're way far. I know, I'm sorry. I just romance. get really excited about romance. Is this romance? I, I mean, it seemed like it to me. I don't know if the actual genre is romance, if it fits in there. But come on. The like, Jinshi Mao Mao scene was like, and with like Gyoku being like, it's okay, you know, and putting the pin back in her hair. Yeah. Like, I get you, but like, f for me, like, it was just more like, before like romantic feelings start, there would be that like, like true romantic feelings. It would be that true understanding of another person. <laughs> and I think that like, that is what started, if anything, this episode. And, like, but just But isn't seeing... that beautiful? Yeah. And can it give you butterflies? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a, something that gave me butterflies was seeing how fucking cracked Jinchi is with a sword, dude. And I don't think that was f without reason. Like, it's interesting him bringing up the Ma Clan's blood and stuff like that, but... What I, I think is narratively important, most likely, is showing the capabilities Jinshi has in, like, where he's where he's put, right? Like, obviously, like, how you brought up him and, and the show bringing up him being, like, that, like, false flag of if anybody tries anything, mm -hmm. that's a red, like, a, a red flag. But what would happen if somebody tried to do something to one of the Emperor's favorite concubines? And somebody tried to attack. You'd exactly. Jinshi is literally here. Not only if from the scene like you're bringing up, this is showing us that not only is he there as a test, but he can truly be there as a protector. He, he I still think is you have to have a person like Jinshi has to be one of the most trusted people. Mm -hmm. He has to be okay. Well, I feel like if the emperor had siblings, it would be a known fact at least in the rear palace, that that's who Jinshi was. Mm. So I, I am kind of conf confused on who Jinshi could be to the emperor to have this level of trust and not be a sibling. Yeah. Or a son or something. Maybe, I don't know if the emperor ever fought in a battle or something, but maybe they go back in, and they used to be like, and in the same way that um, Lady Fuyu was given as a uh, reward, uh, betrothed to someone who did great things in battle, maybe Jinshi has a high status and high regard with the Emperor because he did something impressive. There has to be something here that would have the emperor trust this man so much that he's like yes go flirt with my concubines yeah hmm. but i feel like if it was anything so obvious as like son or brother or family that everyone would know I, and we would know one scene i wanted to bring up about jinshi was when he's taught when he's like recounting that slap and like instance of mau mau like being direct like i told you it's poison what the fuck are you doing jinchi's response is it was unexpected seeing that side of her and then goshen says something along the lines of are you all right sir you seem very concerned and i think that that's really fascinating and i wonder if like a possible interpretation of that is that they're like every time jinchi ever says anything out loud in pondering to himself it is mainly about the topics at hand or around him. And it would be about something pondering like, oh, it, does this mean that? Does this mean this? This, like, like trying to solve something or think about something uh, in terms of trying to, like, rat out, like, a, a potential issue that's ar arisen or, like, you know, like, uh. But in this case, it was Mau Mau and it was more about, like wow i haven't seen that side of her and to somebody like goshen it could be like he's only ever see him 
ponder this way if it if it relates to work or something more yeah yeah. his jobs serious i mean that could be a sign of showing him start to focus a little more on things that are other than his job i i do like the idea that he is getting more and more like before he had this kind of surface level in terms of dynamic and banter uh, attraction or interest in talking to Mau Mau yeah. because he liked seeing her reactions. He liked how she spoke to him. It's now after seeing what he saw with Lady Louisa's ladies and waiting and the makeup last episode, he's like, there is so much more to this person that is intriguing to me that I don't know and I don't understand. Therefore, the ending of this episode from that pondering mm-hmm. is him learning something about her that has him be serious again in the same way that we see him be kind of perplexed and pondering to himself seriously i uh love the relationship that's developing between mau mau and the quack doctor it's amazing (laughs) i like i and i feel awful because he's like so excited that jinchi's there he's like running away to make makes shit for him and then he's just gone there's also a lot of trust there like not only like, the doctor literally had someone there to visit him. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah, Mau Mau can make you something. Mau yeah, Mau, yeah. do you know what to do? Like, he's just the trust there and then just handing things over to her. I really love that uh, her reasoning for doing this wasn't... We know that she's totally okay with making herself a snack and eating it by herself. Mm-hmm. She did this so she had a partner in crime. Yeah. <laughs> that is the most beautiful part of that. Like, and- she would have been... Fully okay with eating this alone in her bedroom. Like, and she fucking knew. Mm-hmm. He knew. He was oh. like, this is how I like them cooked. <laughs> Man. I, uh, any guesses for the woman's dress? Bottom of the sleeves were burnt. We see the woman at the end of the episode, you know? Right. Uh, so the sleeves were burnt. That kind of tells us that, it, at least to me, I'm thinking someone was wearing that dress and was meddling with fire and, and igniting fire. And that's how it got burned. Uh, Secret messages was brought up. Yeah. The idea that this could affect this garden party. Obviously, we get that ending shot of what seems like a lady with like a slightly open mouth, kind of like happily, creepily smiling in the dark. I'm really liking that it's going into next episode, too. You Mm -hmm. know, this like this plot is overarching. Right. I So one place that I do want to possibly go in terms of theory town is that all four of the con this is the first time in a while that all four of the concubines, like the four main concubines, are together. And the discourse that's brought up in this episode is the idea about the fact that the emperor isn't married yet. Yeah. I don't know if that would have anything to do with it. Maybe there is a concubine that is jealous she's not within that top four. Uh, Maybe there's someone, there's a rush for the emperor to get married and someone's trying to push that. Um, I'm not sure. I I like where you're going with it. I did like seeing the other two concubines and kind of, they all have their own kind of titles or reason why they are loved by the emperor. Li Shu looked young, looked like Mao Mao's age. I don't actually know how old Mao Mao is. My guess, at least just, I know it's like I don't know. art, so it's hard to really I, guess. I think I'd go like 16. I have no idea. But I actually have no idea. I don't think we were ever told, so. Um, but she seems young, and Li Shu seems young, too. Li Shu totally could be... Uh, could be flirted into betraying the emperor by Jinshi, it seems like. Yeah. Like, she was like, and her ladies in waiting were like, oh my god. Oh my god. I wonder if Jinshi kind of avoids some of the concubines in order to protect them. Mm. Like, I feel like with his job and how much he seems to actually care about people, Yeah. if he gets to a position where he might care about your well-being or you might have the status of one of the higher concubines you'd probably have a worse treatment or worse punishment yeah and so he might try to maybe avoid you a little bit i'm not that would go against his job one of the last things i want to talk about is um mau mau's innovation (gasps) yes of like coming up with different ideas it's not just like being just an apothecary it's just like her con I, okay one dialogue one quote just to sum it all up 
a little work makes things better. And the line before that was, um, custom can sometimes stifle ideas. Yeah, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, I, I love it. I love it. I love everything about it. And I love that it's not just die, like, uh, testing poison. I, lo I love how it's bleeding into every aspect of life and not just... Okay, I love that it's bleeding into every aspect of life for Mau Mau and the positive reception of it. That's what I love more than anything, too. I think it's a through line to seeing that there's a positive reception from from everyone in, in the rear palace and even the seamstress to the emperor to kind of getting uh, new ideas or innovation kind of circling through while also having the idea of uh, hearing more about the outside world being yeah. something that is uh, good for these people to be hearing or something fresh to them. Man, what do you think, like, you know, I know I know some people who, just because, like, they're feeling themselves, like, on a night out, they, like, put some, like, fake freckles on. Fake freckles have become, like, a thing. Like, I don't know if it still is. What but... do you think? No, it definitely is. Like, like oh, it, that is a thing. It's it subjective. It was, like, a trend, it... I would say, for, yeah. uh, for a bit. But, I mean, I, but... Like, regardless, I, I wonder if uh, someone who, like, just, like, vibes in that type of way of watching this being like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not the reason I do it. Um, Good. Man. Hopefully the places you're going are a lot safer than yeah. the places Mau Mau I grew really up. love this episode. That... I'm excited to see, like... I'm excited to see the pacing continue the way that it has. Mm-hmm. I am nervous, though, about this, uh, whatever this garden party possible attack would be. I think that it has to pertain to some sort of explosion or fireworks, right? Maybe. If the word fireworks had, oh, like, these sorts of things are used in fireworks was brought up at the very beginning of Trying the episode. Trying to make, like, an, a, a bomb-type beat? Yeah, that, or it's, like we're reading into it too much in the same way that we read into the idea of curses and rumors too much. Mm. Like the people in this universe read into that idea too much. And it could just be as simple as there's someone who wants to show off their skills and do a beautiful fire show, uh, innocently to entertain I know, the emperor. I, I think that there's potential, the through line of Jinchi showing us what skills he has with the sword continuing at a later episode. I think I would like to see yeah. that. Alright, that's all I have you. Yep. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.